Electrolytes have a greater impact on colligative properties than non-electrolytes. The colligative properties are the boiling point elevation, which we know is calculated by taking the boiling point constant and multiplying it by the molality of the solution. The freezing point depression, which is calculated the same way using a different constant and osmotic pressure, which is calculated by taking the molarity of the solution and the temperature and multiplying them by the gas constant, R. All of these colligative properties are affected not only by the concentration of the solution, but also they're affected by whether the solute is an electrolyte or a non-electrolyte. As a reminder, a non-electrolyte is a substance that does not dissociate when it dissolves. For example, the sugar molecule, when it dissolves, the sugar molecule stays completely intact. None of the atoms in the sugar molecule fall off or it doesn't fall apart. Every one mole of sugar that is dissolved in water remains just one mole of sugar. An electrolyte, on the other hand, is a substance that dissociates when it dissolves. Something like sodium chloride, when it is put into water, not only does it dissolve, but it dissociates into two separate particles, the cation and the anion as well. Because electrolytes dissociate into two particles, or sometimes three, or maybe even four, the concentration of particles is greater for an electrolyte than it is for a non-electrolyte. If we're just looking at how many pieces of things are dissolved in these solutions, anytime we have an electrolyte, we're going to have more particles present in the solution than if we had a non-electrolyte. The way that we can take this into consideration when we're calculating boiling point or freezing point changes or osmotic pressure is by using another variable that we call the Van't Hoff factor. The Van't Hoff factor, which is symbolized with a lowercase i, is just the number of particles that are present in the solution after a molecule dissolves. So for something like uh, any non-electrolyte, like sugar, because non-electrolytes do not dissociate, the value of the Van't Hoff factor for these particles is always one because they remain just one single particle. But for an, for an electrolyte, the value of the Van't Hoff factor depends on how many cations and how many anions you have present in that solution. So for sodium chloride, as we've seen, there's one cation, there's one anion, that's a total of two particles. The Van't Hoff factor is two. Or for something like um, magnesium chloride, MgCl2, this substance has three particles. It has one magnesium cation and it has two chloride anions for a total of three particles. In our equations for the colligative properties, the Van't Hoff factor is included along with all of the other variables that we use to calculate these different properties. We typically write it at the beginning of the equation and it's pretty normal to include this I variable in all of the colligative properties. If we have a non-electrolyte, the value of I is just simply going to be one and mathematically it doesn't matter. It doesn't have any effect on, um, on the overall outcome of the boiling point, the freezing point, or the osmotic pressure. Now, one thing that I do want to add before finishing the video is that the actual experimental values of I are usually less than what we predict. So we predict that the value of I for sodium chloride is two, but the actual value of I is a little bit less. And same with magnesium chloride, we predict it to be three, but the actual value is a little bit less. Typically when you're solving problems using the Van't Hoff factor, um, you'll just use the predicted value of I unless you're being told otherwise. If you need the true value of I for any one of these electrolytes, then you can easily look it up on the internet or in a table in your textbook.